after wrecking our Tahoe several times, my wife said to me, Charlie, we need to get a farm truck. And I'm just sitting there thinking, geez, a farm truck? What else am I going to spend money on? Well, turns out you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on a farm truck. We got this F-250 here for just a few hundred dollars. And I'm going to walk you through, show you what's wrong with it, show you what to work, look for, and hopefully get you to think over what it is that you need in a farm truck so you can spend the minimal amount of money to get exactly what you need. This farm truck works perfectly for us. When we bought it, we called him Moby Dick. Now we call him Smoky Moby because, well, he smokes a lot. But that's nothing to be concerned about. We're not traveling long distances. So let me walk you through this truck, and I'll show you some things that are important to us on the ranch and uh, help you weigh some of the, the pros and cons of buying a farm truck. So this is, the, uh, this is an F-250. It's a 1993. It's the Excel trim package. Um, I don't really care too much about the trim, but I do want it to be sitting up off the ground. I don't want an old work truck. Um, and I want it to look semi-decent when I go to the feed store. One of the great things about this truck when we bought it are the tires. It has plenty of tread life left. You don't want to buy a farm truck just to have to turn around and spend a thousand bucks on tires. So as long as they're not bald, bald you're, you're doing good shape. Um, what we paid for this truck, these tires are probably worth. So we did pretty good just with the tires on this truck. Another important thing about a farm truck is to make sure that it's 4x4. And you want to make sure that 4x4 works. And if the seller's not willing to let you test the 4x4, chances are it doesn't work. So you want to make sure your 4x4 works. Um, another important thing about this farm truck is we did not want dualies. Dualies slip, slip pretty easily. We're not pulling heavy loads. Uh, this truck is an F-250. It can still pull up to 10,000 pounds. Um, but we don't have dualies. We just have a standard truck with 4x4, and it's a 250, so we, we've got the ability to pull the weight. But we also have a lot more tread and a lot more, uh, we have a vehicle that's more versatile on the land, because that's what we're driving it on. We're driving it out on the land. We're not driving it on a road. So I would suggest staying away from dualies. Um, they're not going to give you any more traction back in those fields. It's going to make it worse. You'll have to excuse all the trucks driving by. There's a lot of farms around here. Uh, people are moving stuff. Anyway, uh, make sure your truck has a tow package. It's not a truck without a tow package, and it's definitely not a truck without a truck bed. And I would suggest getting a standard or long truck bed because you're going to be using the truck bed more than anything. You don't want a small truck bed or a short truck bed. It's not going to do you any good. This truck is uh, it has got a long truck bed. It's got four-wheel drive. It's an F-250, and it's not dualies, and it has a tow package. So on the exterior, everything's pretty good. It did not come with a truck box. That's something I added myself. Uh, it was on one of my old work trucks from work. Uh, the inside of this truck is pretty clean. We've got our, uh, it's a standard. It has overdrive. We've got our uh, four-wheel drive shift. It's a good thing to make sure that your uh, four-wheel high, it's a good thing to make sure that your four-wheel drive high and low both work. Um, especially out on a farm, you're going to use low a lot and you're going to use high a lot. Um, this truck has a rear seat. I have a family. We come out to the farm all together, so it's good good way to pack us all into one vehicle and not have to take two um, and especially important when you're driving a truck like this that only gets eight miles a gallon um, but the uh, the rear seat was important to us it may not be important to everybody it's just it depends on what you're doing with it if you're gonna have people working with you and you have to drive out into a field and pack everybody in it's always safer to be in the cab than it is the back of the truck especially if you've got tools back there that can flop around and hurt somebody uh, truck has a stereo, has working air conditioning, uh, everything we could ask for inside the cab, we got it for just a few hundred bucks. Now, let's pop the hood, take a look under there. Now, under the hood of an old truck, especially a farm truck, this is where things can get a little testy. Um, I could show you some of the problems that we found with this truck. They don't bother me because, again, I, I only drive it around the farm and to do work and I'm not driving it long distances. I have taken it, you know, maybe on an hour's drive somewhere to get materials, but I'm not driving it anywhere special. Now, this is a 7.5 liter 460 gas engine. So 
Uh, it's not the 7.3 liter diesel. I would have loved to have that, but it would have cost me a lot more money. And because this is not a daily driver, I wasn't too concerned about it. I've got my power with the gas. Um, we had to replace the battery first thing when we got it. Uh, battery wasn't holding a charge. And if you watch some of my other videos, you'll see where we came in here and had to replace the alternator, and we put a new alternator in the system. Um, now, there are a couple ways I'm going to show you that this engine is actually a bad engine. It has a, the kiss of death on it. Uh, we continue to drive it because we're not going to hurt the engine anymore. It's already hurt. But uh, number one, when I lift up my uh, coolant and I look in there, let's see, I'll uh, show you what it looks like. It's hard to get a good angle on the coolant that's in there, but the, the coolant has a lot of brown color to it. It's not, uh, it's not green or pink like coolant comes out of the can. Um, we may be able to fix that with a coolant flush or maybe a leaking head gasket in here somewhere. Um, I'm going to go with a bad head gasket, but again, we haven't tried a coolant flush on it. And the truck still runs, so I'm not too worried about it. Down here is another problem. You can see uh, that there is oil all over the place around my dipstick. Now all this oil down here and around the dipstick, that's not coming from an oil leak. I had an oil leak down there fixed. What that is, is the oil is actually coming back out of the dipstick, which tells you one of two things. You have a P bad PVC valve, uh, and the airflow is having to come back up the dipstick, or there's a chance that your engine's bad. Now in this truck, I'm, I'm going to go with both, because I know that the engine has a bad piston. I don't think that that bad piston is really pushing the oil back up that dipstick. And I found another thing while changing the alternator that tells me that I'm having a problem uh, probably with my PVC valve as well. Um, but that's one thing to look at. If you're going to have to travel long distances with your truck, you want it to be a sound truck. This by no means is a sound truck, except for, you know, as far as it functions as a farm truck, it's absolutely fine. Another dead giveaway that this truck has oil burning problems is that the seller had a nice little oil filler uh, funnel right there, um, which I use on a regular basis. So thank you, seller, for leaving that in there. So a tall tale sign that you're going to have engine compression problems uh, is really when the engine started up and running. And when I start this up, you're going to see this engine start tipping back and forth. It's because it's missing. We only have seven working cylinders in this engine, so it's always going to miss on the eighth cylinder. That's going to continue to rock the engine, and uh, that's a good sign to, if you're looking at buying a car, uh, that if it's a, if it's a steady rock and it's a constant rock and it's not just when you're applying gas, there's probably something that's hitting wrong inside the engine. Um, and again, if you're buying a truck for traveling long distances, you don't want to do that. If you're just looking for a farm truck that you can beat up and abuse, um, this type of situation is nothing to worry about. Just drive it until it's dead. Um, so let's start this thing up. Let's see, so I can show you what it does. There we can see the uh, engine has a constant rock. That's a pretty good sign that uh, there's a problem with the pistons of the engine. Um, Again, we knew this when we bought the truck. Our main concern was that the truck ran, uh, but if you're only able to afford one vehicle and you need the truck to be a driving vehicle and a farm truck, I definitely not, would not suggest buying a truck like this because you're not going to get very far. Another thing to keep an eye out for on a farm truck when you're buying one is uh, if there's smoke coming out of the tailpipe. There's white smoke, there's blue smoke, and then there's fire. Fire is really bad, blue smoke is bad, white smoke you can live with. Uh, on this truck you're going to see a lot of white smoke coming out of the tailpipe. Um, again, that has a lot to do with the bad cylinder and um, it's just burning a lot of oil and there's not much we can do about that without replacing the engine. But the good news is, is we only spent a couple hundred dollars on the truck so we can save up 2,000 bucks and put a right engine in. Now, I always like to come up underneath the truck and check out how it looks under, on the other side. I have, uh, my sister and brother-in-law bought a truck that actually had a cracked frame. So the truck was literally breaking in half. And again, you definitely don't want that as a farm truck. So 
it's good to get up underneath these things and just check them out. Make sure everything looks clean. There's not a lot of rust. Um, this truck is very clean on the underside, probably because it's just coating all the oil that it keeps dropping. Um, but overall, it's, it's a pretty good truck. The transmission's great. The, uh, the clutch is a little, little worn, but the four-wheel drive works great. Uh, there's only 120,000 miles on the actual truck itself, even though the battery is bad. Um, but again, look up underneath these things, check your boots for rot, um, and just make sure that what you're buying is, is still a solid vehicle regardless of any mechanical issues it may have. Now I'm sure you're wondering how we got a farm truck like this for only several hundred dollars, even though it has a bad engine in it. And one of the things I'm going to point out to you here are these green X's. This truck that came from a salvage yard has a total loss salvage title. And there's nothing wrong with that for a farm truck. Um, the, the roof of the truck is all caved in when we got it. I took a hammer, banged it out the best I could. Um, overall, the body condition of this truck, there's nothing wrong with it except for a few dents and dings. But it was enough to total the truck. They probably took it to the salvage yard, took out the good engine, sold it to somebody else, put a bad engine back in it, kind of rebuilt it, sold it for a few hundred bucks, literally as a farm truck. So if you're looking for trucks, I would check with salvage companies. I would, I would, you know, go to the salvage yards, try and figure out where you can buy, even check with insurance companies, figure out where you can pick up an old truck for a few hundred dollars that it still runs as long as you've got a decent body. Not everything is totally salvaged. It didn't take, it wasn't one of those things where we looked online and found this in one weekend. We actually looked for several months before we found a farm truck that was in the price range we wanted to spend, that was in decent condition, you know, and again, as long as it runs, and it runs, uh, it's going to work for us. And the four-wheel drive had to have worked. That was my big thing, four-wheel drive, air conditioning, rear seat, and a running truck with a working, working bed that's not going to break in half.